Okay, let's do one final example. A drug company is testing a new cream to, le to relieve skin rash. They try it on 20 people and a placebo on 20 people and find that it works better. Okay, so they got this new drug, very excited. Later, someone realizes that the new cream was tested on mostly all men and the placebo was tested on mostly all women. Is it possible the difference seen could have been due to confounding? What about common response? Okay, so we'll make our little chart. So we have um, our cream. Right, so this is the new cream. New cream. And we think that the new cream is going to decrease skin rashes. But we've decided that there might be this confounder, this lurking variable of gender. Okay, and we do know the gender is associated with whether or not someone got the new cream. And we do know that gender may be associated with how sensitive someone's skin is. So gender is going to be a confounder. Because it may make it look like the new cream is leading to decreased skin rashes. But really, it's that more people got the new cream and more people are in Sorry, more males got the new cream, and males have maybe less sensitive skin. So why did I call this a confounder and not a lurking variable? Well, that's because it's not really lurking. We measured it. We know that it's there. So that's why this is a, called a confounder. So this was measured. We know that it is there. And this is a kind of common response, right, because the, the cream is in a way responding to gender, uh, and then the skin rash is very probably responding to gender. But we wouldn't actually refer to this as a common response because the gender isn't causing the new cream. It's just that we've kind of assigned it improperly, so the gender is what's changing the skin rash. So both the new cream are acting on skin rash and gender are acting on skin rash. So it's a confounder, not a lurking variable, because we did measure it. We know it's there. And then we're going to call this uh, confounding rather than common response, because gender isn't causing the cream. It's that we've assigned it differently, so it's just kind of there in the background to affect how the skin reacts to the cream applied. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, Confounding can be a little confusing, and as you move on to more advanced statistics courses in college, they really don't talk about this difference between common response and confounding. It's more that there is confounding, um, and it's really an AP statistics thing to talk about the common response. But for the most part, common response is going to be something that's like really obviously common response. Like, okay, the sun went up, so more people ate ice cream, more people drowned. Um, and anything that's more subtle, like, yeah, these two things could be related, but maybe gender is affecting the relationship with skin rash, well, that's what's going to be referred to as confounding for the AP exam. Okay, thank you for joining. Hope to see you next lecture.